straight pole. Leading RLR car Sport. has left the track. Leading car has left the track. For Michael Jensen and it's Iron Dames versus Spirit of Race at the sharp end of LMGT3. For the second time this year, we're about to go racing in the European Le Mans series. It's the four hours of Le Castellet, one or two perhaps going slightly too early in the mid-pack, but it is a good getaway from Paul Lafargue as they head down into Verary for the first time. And that wonderful orchestra of 4.2 litre V8 Gibson engine as Johnny Gibbs, uh, Johnny uh, Edgar rather had a bit of a moment coming out of Berry, but he controlled it well. There was at least one that straight lined the S bend, and now into Virage du Lotel. A few looking for the inside line into Camp Corner, including the Philippe Ugran driven United Autosports number 22. And there's a spinner in the mid pack. The Virage car. It's Is it Virage, Virage or Panis? Uh, oh, that's you, you might be correct. That's from that angle, you're absolutely right. Uh, Two no. cars went right wide, by the way, and no, I you, think we may have another car off to the inside. You were bang on. It's Tony Wells in the number 19 team Virage car because the 65 Panis car got safely through. Manuel Maldonado is in 10th. We're missing the chicane this year, remember? We did that last year too. So down the Mistral and the full 1.8 kilometres, it climbs up to a crest before going through senior corner, and they were side by side uh, entering that part of the circuit. Philippe Ugran with David Heinemeyer Hansen, Greg Goodwin. It is Francois Perodo that's in trouble. He is tumbling down the order. I think I saw that car off to the inside at the just beyond the point where Tony Wells uh, was in trouble. But uh, all cars have come through the next timing area, I think. I think Tony Wells has got himself moving. We'll keep an no, eye on no. that. He's not reached the end of sector one, and that's pretty much what... Although he could have missed the timing loop, of yeah. course, because of the spin. Um, he hasn't yet posted a time at the end of the Mistral straight. Lots of shoulder barging going on into the final corner of the first lap. One of the two inter-Europol competition cars virtually side-by-side with David Heinemeyer Hansen, so that's Luca Giotto trying to make some progress, and Giotto gets through to fend off for seventh position, the Dane behind. Yeah, I think it was the other Interpol car that went wide, and the Pro Am uh, Nielsen car into turn two, but all is well with those two. Keep an eye on what's going on with Tony Wells has restarted. Yes, I think he he's possibly got a bit of a transponder issue. He's making his way up the LM GT3. Yeah. And that was a reasonable final sector. It's in the ballpark at 52 seconds, so it does look like the number 19 Tim Virage P2 Pro-Am car is back up to speed. Didn't quite work out how he ended up facing the wrong way at Virage du Comp, but he may well have been pushed. It doesn't take that long for the bollard that sits on the apex there to be plucked out, and I reckon possibly Tony Wells in the spin has removed that already. Talk of the Panis racing car, it's a change of livery for 2024, this Mark VDS uh, tribute, I suppose, as well. So no, no, they're actually backing the team. Oh, I beg your pardon. Yes, they are. Okay. No, Mark van der Straten that is, uh, is one of the backers of the team this year. Right, so that's the reason why this is brand new look to this car. Uh, but they're not included in the title of the team, it's still simply known as Panis Racing. And it is Manuel Maldonado in car number 65 running 10th. But Paul Lafargue, partway round lap two, leads by 1.1 seconds over Johnny Edgar, Jonas Reed, trying to stay within touching distance. And in the GTs, we still have the same order from the front row. Sarah Bovey in the bright pink Porsche of Iron Dames, leading Duncan Cameron in the green and white spirit of race Ferrari. Those two troubled LMB2 Brown Pro-Am cars. Uh, Tony Wells has cleared the LMGT3 field, and we saw in the previous shot, uh, there is uh, the AF Corsa car just needs to go by the last, the, the, the top two. Uh, car 10, meanwhile, under investigation, overtaking before the start line. So car 10, the Vector Sport entry. Yeah. Uh, there were a few, potentially, that were doing that, so I wonder whether that's the first of a flurry, but Ryan Cullen will, well, whether he gets a penalty or not, we'll wait and see, but normally there's no smoke without fire. I think there's been a, a moment here. Yes, there you go for the 88 car. That car plummeting down the order. Alexander Bikantsov in trouble in the interior of Paul Ligier, all by himself at the final turn. Meantime, at the front of the pack, dodging, weaving, looking to not give that all-important slipstream down this massive Mistral straight into the awesome scene corner. 
something like 200 miles an hour point of turn in there for these cars. Remember, more power this year. Some 580 brake horsepower from this Gibson 4.2 litre engine. We've got the 22 United Autosports car of Philippe Ugran getting involved in this uh, group. Has managed to edge his way by the number nine car. Can he get clear and get onto terms with the cool racing car ahead? Lorenzo Jonas, Fluxer. Jonas Reed has lost two places in about two corners there, so I don't know whether that's a genuine struggle for the Iron Lynx Proton Orica. His pace onto the start finish straight looks okay. He's level pegging now with Luca Giotto, but should have the inside line into Verary for the fourth time. 0.6 of a second the gap between Lafargue and Johnny Edgar, so that's been halved since we last mentioned it. It's growing from Edgar to Lorenzo Fluxa. And Fluxa was a little more dominant three weeks ago in Barcelona. Remember, he grabbed the lead early on for uh, cool racing. Can't do the same though in the, the second round and uh, he's more in defensive mode to a charging Philippe Ugra. Yeah, Johnny Edgar on some form.